Welcome to the shooting show. The harvest is on, you may hear the combine there in the background, but it's also the height of the row rut and Paul Childerly takes out a pretty young novice stalker for a first row book. Plus we test the Rolls Royce of semi-automatic shotguns from Benelli. Today, Paul Childley is stalking with a novice guest, clear shooting magazine's Natalie Parker. Um, yeah, Natalie is, is, a, is a novice, which is actually, I actually quite enjoy teaching a novice because um, you're instructing them to, to the ways how you um, like to hunt. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, so basically we got her onto the target, we got her on the bipod to start with and got her comfortable with the rifle. Possibly where we're, we're stalking today, we might be on the sticks. Um, um, like I say, in the rut, they're a little bit more uh, what should I say, yeah. stalker friendly, so hopefully they'll give us a better chance to get a shot. Um, so what we've done, we've got Natalie on the sticks, 50 yards, uh, she's got it at 40 yards, um, again, several dry fires till she's comfortable, and then we've done uh, four shots. Um, th first three was low, um, and then the, the final one, yeah, perfect. She seems very comfortable, and um, yeah, I'm happy to uh, get hunting. Although I go rough shooting, this is going to be a completely new experience for me. Um, I've been looking forward to going stalking for a very long time. Venison is my favourite meat. I think I'll have what it takes to pull the trigger today. It's just the start of the uh, roebuck rut um, and it's, yeah, it's in full swing in, in Gloucestershire and in Oxfordshire now. Um, speaking to a couple of colleagues and um, they say the last, last four days they've been, it's, been, it's been full on. I think it's probably um, a lot of stalkers' favourite time of year. Um, Roebucks are renowned for being some of the greatest sport you could get. Um, and in the rut as well, you know, it's exciting. Um, if you're skilled enough or lucky enough, you can actually uh, call the bucks into you. Um, but it just depends on, on the day, the weather, and uh, how good your, your, your calling skills are. What we're going to do, um, because we're a little bit early and there's a little bit of rain, but which is not a bad thing, uh, we will uh, go to another uh, quite a dense wooded area and uh, just stalk down to the bottom, bottom of this uh, a deep gully and again tuck ourselves in and then try some uh, calling. Um, there's, there's two calls um, that I use, the Hubertus Cherry Whistle, um, it's actually probably my favourite. Um, it's, it's quite good because you have the different uh, dial on the top so you can get the different tones um, so you get a softer uh, squeak to a, a more sort of like a, aggressive squeak um, so you can mimic fawns um, so you can actually call in the doe and then again the buck can follow or um, call a buck straight in. It's good for uh, when you're in woodland and it's slightly thicker. Trial and error really, what, what sound do you think um, is going to work in the area you are? Um, again. I think softer and then build it up to more more of like a louder tone. Um, everybody has their own preference and their own skills and their own ways of doing things. Um, I know one chap that uses a beech leaf and works very well so you know there's no correct or incorrect way it's, it's everybody has their own skill and their own uh, ways of doing things. Um, there's a Boutelot call um, which uh, is very I think quite a noisy call um, if you have a buck a long distance away and you need to get his attention, um, you, you can basically draw his attention. Um, also, if you have a, a doe a long distance away and you think a buck's actually with her, again, you can, you can get her attention and she may well um, draw in and then lead the buck to you. The conversation is over and it's time for action. The pair have already exhausted a few areas, but this one looks promising. They disturb a roebuck pestering a doe on the ground, but the deer waste no time in fleeing. Mm -hmm. 
basically we, we saw a, a young buck there. We thought we could get up close to him and give him a squeak and get him just to break cover because he, he tickled to the edge of the cover and then just popped inside. Um, but he got into that, that thick cover and, and he was away. Um, but I thought he was going to go through to the uh, tall Christmas tree plantation at the back. So I thought if we get to the, through around to the back side of that, um, that's when we, we bumped the two, two, two young fawns. Um, and we got around the back and obviously there, there was no sign of him. So we failed. <laughs> but onward and upward. Down there in a, with a six pointer with him as well. So, well, in the same field. So. Undaunted, the stalking duo try their luck again in pastures new. There's a doe. Okay. There's another buck there as well. Another buck just walked through. There's three bucks there. Right. Paul knows the area well, and Natalie shows good field craft for a first timer, but nothing has presented itself so far. Eventually, their luck changes. Paul and Natalie stalk into a group of three bucks at odds over territory. One of these looks like a gold medal head, but the other two are prime cull bucks. Natalie is in position, but the bucks weren't coming close enough and Paul decides against taking any action, gambling on them coming closer. However, as time ticks on, we eventually have to accept it's not going to be our day and look forward to tomorrow's attempt. It was a. It was actually quite an enjoyable uh, afternoon sport, really. Um, classic stalking. Um, it doesn't always go uh, perfectly to plan, uh, but we see a nice few bucks. Uh, try again tomorrow, maybe. Yep, that sounds great. It was such a shame to be so close, and yet so far, just with um, how the bucks panned out. Like one moment they were there, next moment they were gone. Just yeah. by the time we were set up. But I really enjoyed it and I'd love to come back if you'll have me. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely, yeah. So um, same, time, same time tomorrow then. Super, sounds yeah. good. Okay. Right, here we go again, round two. Um, second day on the, the row, trying to get a uh, row book for Natalie. Um, the weather's a little bit overcast and a little bit breezy, but we'll, um, we'll give it a go. And we'll persevere, get yeah. one today. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so yeah, if we get all the kit together and then we'll go down to one of the woods and um, see if we can squeak one up. Good to see spirits haven't been dampened by yesterday's blank. The evening stalk once more begins in earnest. Paul uses the cherrywood call to try to bring in the deer. We've seen a doe in the area with the buck in tow and we hope the kid call will tempt her in with the buck following behind. In fact, we hit jackpot on our first try. Without seeing a doe, we stumble right onto a shootable buck. <laughs> but that's where our luck ends, as eventually there isn't a safe shot to be had. Young, young buck. Um, we actually bumped him. He's, he's only 20, 20 yards away. Um, in the beans and Would have been perfect. it was absolutely perfect. He, he went to about 50 yards, stood broadside 
and you couldn't see enough of his neck to yeah. be able to take an neck shot yeah and you know and then the rest of him you know from there down was just being yeah so just being field yeah so brought the morale and spirits up so yeah. we're on again right great what we do like is like you say each time one step closer that's it yeah that was a uh, that was good actually because you, you put it down Another walk and stalk and another attempt at calling. <whistles> this time the original plan works as the doe comes in directly. Sure enough, the buck is not far behind. This is the chance that we've spent two evenings waiting for. Now, it's all down to Natalie. Okay. You comfortable? Okay, slowly squeeze it off, gently. Gently. Good. Well done. Good. I'm really proud. <laughs> you should be proud of it. I mean, like I say, um, off the sticks, 63 yeah. metres, and mm. uh, roebuck on the deck. Perfect. Yeah. Well done. Little four pointer. Good little trophy. Yeah, great stuff. Oh, he's gorgeous, and I'm really chuffed. Thank you so much, Paul. No, pleasure. Great. No, well done. I was nervous about how I'd react seeing it in the crosshairs but I just, you know, I'm going to eat it, we're all going to eat it and make the most of it and yeah, what better way to get your meat than something that's free range and fat free and completely natural so I'm really pleased. Mr Childley there getting all the best jobs as normal and now the shooting show news. This is the Shooting Show News. New firearms guidance issued by the Home Office aims to crack down on domestic violence by preventing those with violent histories from obtaining firearms or shotgun licences, with partner checks a central aspect. The guidance says every incident of domestic violence should prompt a review, describes partner interviews as essential, and says interviews with friends, family and associates may also be required. Shooting organisations reacted with praise for the new guidance. Countryside Alliance shooting campaign manager Adrian Blackmore said, The shooting community supports the strengthening of the guidance in respect of domestic violence. The Deer Management Roundtable has proposed a ban on soiled clothing, equipment and trophies from North America in a bid to keep the UK free from chronic wasting disease. The disease is currently confined to North America, but infection in the UK could be disastrous for the deer population and, concurrently, field sports tourism. CWD is always deadly to infected deer and there are no treatments currently available. More information on protecting UK deer from CWD is available on the British Deer Society website. See August's Modern Gamekeeping for the full story. There's just a week to go until the grouse season begins and following last year's difficulties, more keepers are optimistic over 2013's prospects. The excellent early summer weather has led to high survival rates among grouse broods. The Sporting Let's Agency is one of those publicly predicting bountiful grouse numbers. Robert Rattery, a partner at CKD Galbraith, said early indications suggest good brood sizes and unless we have a sustained period of cold, wet weather, we should see good grouse numbers. The Lead Shot campaign has received its 10,000th signature in support of using lead legally. The campaign, a joint effort between a large number of major shooting organisations including Basque, the Countryside Alliance and the GWCT, aims to show that shooters are committed to using lead within the current confines of the law, in the hope of negating the need for further legislation, which in the view of Basque would run counter to current scientific evidence. Basque's chairman Richard Alley said, Let me make Basque's position on lead totally clear. No sound evidence, no change. To show your support, visit www.leadshotcampaign.org.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Hi.
Hi there, I'm Wes Stanton, I'm editor of Clay Shooting Magazine and as you can probably hear by the noise in the background we're at the Benelli Sporto Championship at West Midlands Shooting Ground, Hodnet. Unlike uh, most other sporting events, there's up to three targets in the air at any one time and you have to use either a Benelli, a Beretta or a Franchi which are all brought in to the UK by GMK. The gun I've been shooting today, not particularly well, but uh, perhaps better than average, is a Benelli Raffaello Super Sport. I would describe this as pretty much the Rolls Royce of semi automatic shotguns. There's almost a stigma attached to semi autos in the UK that they're down market. And yeah, if you've got four or five hundred quid to spend on a second hand one, you can buy a Remington or one of the older Berettas and you can get really good value for money. But if you want the best that money can buy, this is it. What I like about uh, the Benelli is unlike most uh, semi-autos, they are inertia operated rather than gas. With most automatics, the uh, action is cycled by the gases from the spent cartridge forcing this bolt back here. Okay. Unlike this, it's an inertia system whereby the force actually uh, pulls the bolt back. Now what that means in practical terms is there's the fore end that you can see here is exceptionally slim and it's very very maneuverable and easy to use in the hand. Now this gun has very much de uh, been designed to be a clay breaking gun. It has a stepped rib, ported barrels uh, which enables second or today uh, third target acquisition so it retains smoothness uh, as it cycles. Now recoil is reduced on this gun with the aid of the Benelli Comfortec system you'll see that it has a very soft recoil pad and it has these shapes here in the stock that compress on firing that reduces perceived recoil. Loading is very simple, simply slide a shell into the breech, keep your fingers out of the way, press the button and hey presto, in it goes. Simply slide another one into the uh, magazine tube underneath and it's a three shot capacity of course which is uh, legal requirement for a section 2 shotgun in this country. Uh, if you want to unload it without firing that's fairly simple. There's a button here by the trigger, you press that, that locks it off, out comes the shell, out comes the shell, press it again, out comes the shell, press it once more and it stays back which shows that it's safe. I want to call the Benelli the Rolls-Royce of semi-automatic shotguns. It's not strictly true. I've been around the factory in Urbino in Italy and the machines on the production line they have there are actually made by Toyota. And uh, the Benelli is a real success story of production line manufacturing. There's very few human beings in the factory. It's mostly robots. And it starts at uh, one end of the factory as a piece of metal and ends up a gun. And although it is very much a clay breaker, I would probably take it on the foreshore as well. It's proof for three inch uh, magnum it's, uh, and it's proof of steel as well so you can uh, shoot ducks and geese with it if you wish and um, the real advantage of course with the inertia system or another real advantage rather is that because there's less to go wrong on it if you do get it covered in sand seaweed and salt water then it's going to be absolutely fine it's robust and uh, okay the price point won't be for everybody at two thousand pounds some people may wince a little bit, but uh, for my money, it represents excellent value and it'll be a gun that will last for years. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30 p.m. UK time. This is The Shooting Show.